I have a very strong belief that everything that comes into your life is supposed to, and every condition of your life is part of the perfection of it, and that there's a blessing in all of it, and that there are no accidents, that it's a perfect, absolutely, totally perfect universe. Everybody that you meet, you meet for a reason. Everybody you're sitting next to, you're there for a reason. You can either take advantage of it or not. You have choices to make throughout it all. At the same moment, there's an opportunity in it, and I never look back with anything but gratitude for all that was handed to me because I learned firsthand as a very young boy how to be self-reliant, how to take responsibility for myself, how not to blame other people for it and to find something positive in it and always did. Think of yourself as connected to and a part of it all rather than someone who is being victimized or slowed down or abused by or here it happens again. It's all part of the perfection of it all. That's a very nice, enlightening place to get to. It really slows you down. And it doesn't take away your ability to make choices. It takes away your wanting the world to be as you think it should be instead of as it is. That's what defines neurotic. <laughs> That's what neurotic really means. <laughs> to be wanting the world to be as you are rather than as it is. And for you to process it exactly the way it is. And if you see everybody as a teacher, then you ask yourself, what do I have to learn here? And it's like in that second that you're just about to be angry and go around and maybe even have a head-on collision or whatever, or maybe nothing, but still in a hurry, maybe at that moment that person is there. That person is there to teach you to slow down a little bit. Whenever you have a thought of, um, I don't have enough coming into my life, things aren't the way I would like them to be, I don't have enough uh, money coming in, I don't have a, a, the right kind of relationship, that's all coming from a place of fear and a place of lack. When if it, it, when What I've learned to do is just go within and say, I am exactly the way I'm supposed to be, and everything that has ever come, shown up in my life showed up exactly on time, the same way the sun sh shows up on time every morning and the moon shows up every evening on, on time, that everything in this universe uh, is uh, is absolutely perfect. There are no accidents in it. And the only choices that I have are how I'm going to process the things that have showed up in my life, the father that I had, uh, the resentments that I, that, I, that I had with them. I no longer have to have those. So the lowest stage of enlightenment is that stage where you look back on your life and you say, now I know why I had to be an alcoholic for those years. And now I know why I had to be in that relationship with my ex-wife. And now I know why I had to go through the bankruptcy. Or now I know why I had to create that cancer. Or that heart attack. Or whatever it was that taught me how to transcend that self-defeating behavior that I used to think I couldn't do anything about. <laughs> you see? The second stage of enlightenment is when things like this are happening to you you know there's a blessing in it. There's an opportunity in it while it's happening. You're smoking and you know that there's something in this for me. You're going through a relationship difficulty or you're having an accident or you've gone through a series of illnesses. Whatever it may be that seems to be a struggle for you in your life, while it's happening, you're looking constantly for the what's in it for me. What can I get out of this? There's no mistakes out there. It's all being created for some reason. So that's the second stage. And that minimizes the suffering. Because you're looking for what's in it for you. How can I get something out of that? So that the person cutting you off, the way your children talk, whatever, you're not instantly threatened by that. You're constantly aware that these people are behaving that when there's something in this for me to learn. And I think I'll get it now. I think I'll get it now. Instead of waiting six years suffering through it and then seeing it. But there's a higher stage. It's the highest stage. In Zen they call it, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. <laughs> After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. It's the same. The only difference is that you're doing it from a totally new perspective of thought. And this dimension, the highest stage, what enlightenment really is, it's when you're back home again, instead of pulling away from yourself, you're towards yourself, and this is what it is. You are able to get out in front of it. Play it out in the dimension of thought. 
and decide for yourself whether it's even necessary to bring it into form. You go from being the actor in your life who is being directed by the events, the circumstances, and the other people in your life to being the director at the second stage. And in the third stage, you become the producer of your life.